So I'm going to, going to discuss uh, policy-based content providing for IPFS, um, and yeah, what that means, what are the implications, and like why, like we we think it's something like that uh, will be needed, uh, like at some point uh, for 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 IPFS node peers um, clients. First introduction. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I'm a research engineer at Cloudflare. I work on like this uh, distributed web project, IPFS, Ethereum. Uh, I like croissant. I was a bit like uh, like like deceived, but like the, the kind of like salty croissant. It's not like original French croissant with butter, uh, <laughs> but definitely like very nice to have. Uh, and yeah, I wasn't sure like there was the like croissant like at the time of writing the slides. So well, uh, they are so like definitely happy to chat uh, at some point around croissant. Um, <laughs> overall <laughs> plan for the presentation. Uh, I'm going to discuss what like content providing means. Uh, like and like what are like the various ways and scenario like to envision. Um, then gonna like go over like some tools to define policy, not specific to IPFS, but more as like what has been made. Um, and then some like final notes around that. Um, and first of all, like uh, what is content providing? And I think like um, especially when we want to like define uh, like a peer policy, it's like very different from like a peer police. Like it's not like. Um, especially like about like block list or like centralization, etc. It's more about like choice given to users, uh, like to decide on like what they want to provide, how they want to interact. Um, and if you want to like, you have like you're running your own IPFS node. So like first of all, great, like you're part of the network. Um, and then like uh, usually what will happen is like you will have an interface and you will like send a request to like your IPFS node. I want that content, and yeah, I mean, everything's fine. The content is stored on your node, so you can like access it, like there's no fetch, whatever. Um, thing is usually like the thing with IPFS and like you want to fetch content that is like on another node. Um, and so you will like send a request to your node saying, hey, I want this content, the node doesn't have it. Um, and so like you want the blue content from like your friend, which is like the, the blue friend. Um, and the blue friend, your node would like send a request uh, la, 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 to, to this node, fetch the content, and like everything works well. The thing is, um, like the way uh, at least like most of like nodes implementation work for now is like the you have like little control over like how you will connect to peers, which peer you will like connect to. Um, and so sometimes like you may connect to like a malicious peer that like will just like receive the request, may not like provide the content to you, like may have like different like intentional like different logging policy or etc um, and so for instance like if you're connecting to like the red uh, the red peer which is like malicious this time um, they may you know, like have access to your IP address may know like what content you were looking for at which time um, and there's a lot of like metadata that is like passed through that um, and of course probably not something like you want and so like you may want to have a way to define uh, how you will interact with like all the peers on the network of course, there's like kind of like the other way around. So like when you're, uh, you, you also like, um, uh, like your friend is like providing content to you, they do it because I mean, they know you, they know like, I don't know, like uh, you've been in like, re like relation for like some time. And so I don't know, there's no like counter tracker, et cetera, like that happen. I mean, they know that like they can send content to you. I don't know, like they, they, they will pay for bandwidth, whatever, but like everything's fine. The thing is um, like a malicious peer um, may want to like get content from you um, and I'm not like not provide anything back or like uh, not do anything. And you may consider like this action in terms of like what is considered malicious and like is a very strange. Um, if you were taking, for instance, like in BitTorrent, you had like this kind of like ratio where you were like rated based on like how much you provide and like if you provide, you were supposed to provide as much as you're taking. And like this kind of ratio was like up to like every client usually, you were able to define what is an acceptable ratio. Um, but it's like, like very large. And on the web, for instance, like the web is like very much, we have a lot of people that like will request some content. And so you may want to define, okay, like I'm okay to provide to each user that like will request me a small chunk of content, but I don't want to provide like in a couple of like gigabytes or terabytes from people that would just like take content from me. Another thing which is uh, like in terms of like the need for, 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 for policy um, definition is like, when you request content, how, what do you do with this content? Do you store it? Do you cache it? Is it garbage collected? Do you like reprovide it? Um, and so that's something which has been uh, like very clear for gateways, like gateway that I will talk later, usually like request content on behalf of users and like then they have to cache it, but sometimes it's not content like you want to keep. And so like you have to be able to define like policies around, do you want to keep content? Do you want to reprovide it for how long? 
how can you like uh like somehow know more or less like what, what, what you're storing and like what you're providing um and if you were like a web web user you may just like go to a website once and that could be a typo do you want to store it uh, and what's the policy what's your action and etc and so over like all, all the protocol being able to define a policy is important to that extent and as i mentioned before the gateway i experiencing and like i, I would be like t -t -t talking for collapse here i experiencing this even more because they want to provide content for like a wide range of users and like ideally you just want the gateway to be a pane of glass it should not like be able to like it should be able to like serve most users uh while like, like not accounting for like uh, like what content is being served of course because of like i don't know like each gateway like may be like tied to a legal entity may have like its own like policy etc um the gateway may at some point decide on like the red or the blue um should not pass through the gateway but this decision should be like gateway specific and you be able, should be able like to communicate it uh, and be able to like switch gateway from one to another that that's why like ipfs is like great i think and like the content redressing is that you're able to like request uh, the same content from like any gateway and validate it without like being tied to a gateway or to a specific website. Another question that like raised through that is like, what is an IPFS node? And I think that's like kind of a recurring question. Um, like if I like take Kubo for instance, like there's an HTTP gateway, you have like a lib P2P here, you have like an like, DNS link and IPNS resolver, you have like command line interface. But the question is like, should they also be like policy tools? Should it be like something on top of an IPFS node? Should it be like an external component? It's like, for instance, like IRO uh, modular approach, like just showed show before. This is like a question that arises, and also it will depend on the place where you want this policy to be deployed. So now, like, is there like right now existing tools that like, you could use for IPFS or like for all these things uh, in, in order to like define like these policies? Um, and actually, just before going into existing tools, we need to know what do we want to act because like there's like a broad spectrum of policy you could define and the thing is at some point you need to like write code and write software so it like understand what you want to do um and i will take just two examples for like the gateways um if we start like on the on the left side uh, you can like decide to like be like have like a specific block on ipfs that like you don't want to serve because i don't know like you, you've identified it's not something like you want to serve uh, it, it's just, just a bad thing it will not prevent any subcontent from being served. And actually, usually that, that could be a good thing. For instance, like if you have like a phishing website, the phishing website may use and share a lot of resources with like the website that want to fish, but has inserted like just a malicious code, which makes that like the parent CID would be different. So you just want to block this parent and not to block like recursively down the line. Of course, there may be like a block recursively and block recursively should not never block down, but should block up. Um, block down would mean that like you would block all the resources associated to one CID in the sub pass, which you don't want to do most of the time. Um, and then what I mean by blocking up is like if you've identified, I don't know, like one phishing website and then you you're like, a, like you have like a whole lot of phishing websites of so like one CID, which is kind of like the parent for phishing websites. Uh, you may like want to recursively block um, this, this content so that like you also like prevent it from like any uh, like parent or website like um, serving and pro reprovising uh, this uh, the CID you've identified. A final thing that like is not directly IPFS related and is more like a thing for like like for the web is like usually IPFS content would be accessed um, through like a multi address so, like here for instance like IPNS slash example dot com. Then you can like add a pass on like slash my folder slash my super file, um, and so this pass usually requires a resolution and so. What happened on the web is like you would be able to like identify certain website just because of the URL. If it says I'm a super phishing website, you may want to block it just because it looks fishy. Um, and that's uh, like one other place where, where, where you can act is just depending on like at the time of resolution uh, that you see, you may not even know which content uh, address is associated, but you may already know that's not something you want to access. Um, and for that, there's been like across various protocols, and it's not definitely an exhaustive list, there's been like various tools and approaches um, that have been taken for like policy definition. Um, I always like to bring BitTorrent because there's been like a like, lot of software and decisions that have been made um, there, which I think are also like relatable to IPFS in a way like it relates to blog, there's a lot of information um, and, and it's some shared constraints. And so like, as I mentioned before, there's like an ratio, IP geolocation, um, and like various set of tools um, that have been made for BitTorrent. Uh, Matrix has like this uh, like very nice approach of like 
room moderation. So you had like some communities um, and you had like some like shepherd on the community that are able like to decide what should be allowed, what should not be allowed, which is like very important for like, uh, like freedom of speech within certain communities. DNS um, also had this approach with like block lists, with like some like anomaly detection in order to avoid um, amplification, etc. BitSwap, um, and that's uh, like I'm very like uh, happy to say that <laughs> it's been uh, like in the last six months, Bit BitSwap uh, like added like a n n n now uh, and deny list. Uh, so now like you're able to at the BitSwap level um, to configure like which block you want to provide, which blocks you don't want to provide, and definitely that, that that's a super nice addition. But it didn't make it yet to like a policy definition thing, uh, like on IPFS. Um, I will briefly discuss um, IPFS safe mode, uh, which we will release at Cloudflare. Um, there are also like very nice guideline uh, by PL put online. You know, the, like if you want to like you have an nginx cache, how do you like uh, the nginx cache uh, interact with the policy? What you should do in order to like avoid uh, various uh, like takedown uh, that might have happened at like various levels, um, and so this is definitely like a challenging thing. Um, just one uh, example I want to take for like what that could look like for IPFS. So IPFS safe mode is just an extension um, to IPFS, which like allow you to like um, only from like a block list perspective to like block certain content, be able like to purge uh, more easily your cache, search through like the the, the, the various uh, blocks that you've made, um, and also have an audit for like, like, like gateway operators in order to know like what content has been blocked, which time, for what reason, and so you're able to like to, to review that later. Um, was made as a fork of IPFS just so like it can like easily be tried, but definitely the like underlying API could be like, like more interesting um, on that. Finally, some like conclusion about serving what you, you care about. There's at least a growth um, in IPFS and like in content providing. And so both node operator and individual should like have the tools in order to like better define what content is being served, what is being stored, who you want to provide and who you want to, to interact with. Um, to do that, policy tools are like definitely essential to satisfy those needs, um, and they should be able like to work both for like the content you provide and the content you receive. Um, the accessibility will look like will be very different depending on like who you are like addressing. If it's like uh, users on like a web browser, if it is like not a operator that we have like very different needs, but like the base primitive and the API would have some shared set uh, of of content. Um, and I think that's it for like the 15 minutes. So yeah, that's, that's all for me. <laughs> Any question? Yes. Uh, so we had, I mean, from the first time, like we, we deployed the gateway, we had to like integrate like these tools. So like the, uh, the trust and safety tool, uh, team at Cloudflare, like is able to like answer to like, I don't know, DCMA request or like, like all the takedown request. Um, it's integrated both at the bit swap level, not with the allow list, but like with a custom mode, which we might migrate, uh, to, to the allow deny list, but like has been integrated both on like the bit swap level so that we, for content we don't want to provide, we both don't provide them through HTTP, but we also don't provide them through BitSwap. Um, and it's integrated on the HTTP level so that uh, they kind of repuge like the cache at our edge, repuge like the cache uh, that like we have at like various levels. Um, in terms of like uses, um, this kind of like multiple um, cases is like the gateway Cloudflare operates, uh, but there are also like a lot other customers um, that are using Cloudflare. And so at the moment we're more like on the on the move to like have Cloudflare define what Cloudflare wants to serve on its own gateway and like all the users, should they use Cloudflare IPFS service, would be able to define their own policy. And I, I will just go through Alan and get back to you afterwards. Yes. Uh, I just wondered what it looks like when, so if you blocked a particular like CID, if, you, if you've got someone coming through the, a gateway and if they've asked for that CID, what is it, does it just time out or do you get like, how does that, what does it look like for the user? Yeah, so basically when you have a block CID, we just return an HTTP um, 451, uh, which is 
actually it's nice because HTTP defines the code where like it's unavailable for legal reasons. Um, there are other protocols which don't define that and it's just a mess because then like, as you mentioned, like it could be timeout, sometimes it's just like an empty answer and it like really depend on the protocol. For HTTP, we just return it like a 451. Right. How, how does the gateway node distinguish like, from like, when it's asked to get that CID mm -hmm. and asks if it's what to get it? Yeah, um, I mean, basically, we just have like a, like a Postgres database, uh, like which we query for like before making an outgoing request. We, after the resolution has been made, we have a CID and we just check if this CID is included in like the list of content we should not provide or reach out to. So it never like reaches out to bits. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so um, there's even like a cost, uh, like to performance, because you have to check that like, is a CID, um, are you allowed to serve it or not? It's like very minimal uh, addition, uh, because like, I mean, for what we've seen, the resolution is like what's taking the most time. The just one query to database, uh, and like we, we could also like cache this result like for some time. It's not affecting performance that much. Yes. Yes. Is there any thought on like getting a consortium of other folks? Are you going to distribute your deny list to others or sharing this among other parties, kind of like the ad block world? So the answer is no. <laughs> uh, we don't want to provide our own deny list. Um, and once again, I'm not the one making the decisions. More like from like the legal standpoint, would be the same for like um, content for like regular like HTTP traffic. Uh, we would like everyone to like define their own policy. Um, I think like this kind of different approaches. Um, the kind of like ad block is nice, uh, like, like like for 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 blocking like um, certain like HTTP uh, like pass and requests and domains. Um, if you don't have time to build your own, um, and so for now like Cloudflare is more looking into like we will like allow everyone like to do that. We will we are looking into like integrating public deny list, so like for instance, like the, the, the one like from Protocol Lab for now, and like other contribution, but um, the internal like deny list uh, that we have could be like for various reasons and like we, we don't want to uh, to in actively involve in like sensor, like helping censoring like some content. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so if there was something like a protocol for gossiping about that bits as opposed to just that's when you can see like how the player is speaking in, even to inform your own private list or something. Um, so once again, no. <laughs> um, so basically, Cloudflare really tries to only answer to like requests that like come from like like legal background or like like that are backed, and so participating in like these uh, like gossip network, I think it's very valuable from like a community like community standpoint or like kind of like you're, you're creating like a set of IPFS node I don't know, like in France for instance and you want to share things and have insight uh, but as long as it doesn't like come from like a legal like recognized entity that like reaches out to Cloudflare um, Cloudflare won't take action like won't participate in these.